Let's admit that there's been a revival in fountain pens. Realistically, where do you see fountain pens and the fountain pen community in 10 years? Oh gosh, well, I'm not afraid to admit that I think, <laughs> I don't think it's a big secret. Um, but yeah, um, so I'll admit it. Um, it's a great question. You know, I was thinking about this uh, because it's been about 10 years uh, since I got into fountain pens. It'll be 10 years this summer when I really started to, to use fountain pens for myself. And then of course, Goulet pens were hitting our, what we consider to be our 10th anniversary uh, of when we started selling fountain pen goods anyway, uh, on November 17th of 2019. That'll be our 10th anniversary. So, um, you know, thinking about that, I, it's funny, I actually, um, I meant to look at this ahead of time. Let me try to find my journal. Um, but I have a journal that I wrote in when I first started to do the pen thing. And uh, I think I pulled this out maybe once before. This is a Quavatis Habana with white paper from way back in the day. Um, they haven't had white paper in probably nine years. Um, so let me see, it's kind of cool because I actually wrote in my journal around the time that I first got into fountain pens, um, and I was thinking about what is gonna be happening 20 years from now. And uh, that will be 10 years from now is when this journal that I was speculating on will come to fruition. So let me find this thing. See, I have notes from the first time I read Crush It. Um, you can see here, this is the first time that I've written on Clairefontaine paper. And so I just had kind of a stream of consciousness. First time I wrote with Jerobon Inc. Um, yeah, Jerobon Inc. for the first time. Eclat de Saphir um, was the first ink that I'd ever used. So yeah, lots of fun stuff. My sister-in-law wrote in this. <laughs> I have like notes from my infant care class for when my son was going to be born for the first time. I mean, he was only born once, but you know, when my first child was born, I should say. Um, let's see here, some interesting stuff in this notebook. But I had one point in here. Where is it? Okay. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, I have this list. I've talked about this before, about starting a blog. Um, uh, and uh, one of the things that I read, this is a tangent, but I'm just going down memory lane here, if you'll indulge with me. Um, so... One of the first things that I read was that if you can think of 50 different ideas, uh, at least 50 ideas for a blog, then you should definitely start a blog. This was a written blog back when they were all the rage. Um, and so I did. I came up with apparently 84 different things. Um, and I think I've accomplished two or three of them <laughs> after 1,600 videos now. Um, so yeah, did not have a shortage of content. Um, my notes from Crush It, the first time I read Gary Vaynerchuk's book. And uh, let's see here, I read Seth Godin, his book, Tribes. Um, let's see here, there's one part. Um, okay, this part. Um, da -da 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 -da. I said something about, okay. What I struggle with about the blog is what Gary V said in his book about being an expert so that people will return to you. It will be 20 years before I would consider myself to be an expert in, in a lot of this stuff. For Gary, I think people rely a great deal on his palette and colorful descriptions of the wine he's tasting. I'm just not sure if the exact formula applies for the products I'll be reviewing for the Ink Nouveau. We'll just have to find out. Ink Nouveau is what we used to call the blog and YouTube channel. So it's just interesting. I wrote this, gosh, when did I write this? I think I dated it. Um, January 3rd, 2010. So it was actually more like nine years ago. So, um, you know, I, but literally I wrote, it will be 20 years before I would consider myself an expert. So I guess I got uh, 11 years to go or close to it. Um, but still, it's interesting because I still have that original journal. Um, and, you know, it's just funny to think about where I was going to be there. Um, so where do I see the community being in 10 years? I totally didn't answer your question at all. Um, I just thought that was kind of funny um, that that timing kind of worked out. So I see fountain pens continuing to be very much a niche interest. I don't think they're going to go mainstream. I really just realistically and thinking about like, you know, vinyl records and wet shaving and these types of things that there is somewhat a revival of these things. 
but they're only going to be a revival but for so much and they're always going to remain a niche interest i think there's a lot of things that have had a resurgence due to the internet due to social media and people being able to connect with each other and share their enthusiasm around some of these hobbies um, i don't think that we're going to go back to using fountain pens in school as a primary method of writing and communication because that's just not the way the world's going we've got to be realistic but i do think fountain pens are going to receive um, a new revival in a, in a place in our culture, even if it's a subculture of sorts. Um, I'm seeing a lot of interest and a lot of articles and things that aren't even related to the fountain pen community necessarily, but things around writing, journaling, um, things about like journaling around, you know, um, helping with anxiety and depression, journaling as a method of keeping your brain sharp in your older years, um, you know, and a lot of just uh, self affirmations and good mental health stuff around journaling and, and physically writing things down. I think that, you know, mental health is a huge issue in the US probably many other parts of the world. And I think that there's probably more of a connection that's gonna be made around actually writing, journaling, and that type of thing, uh, and tying that to mental health in some way. So I think that if there's more of a renewed interest in studies and stuff that will happen around mental health, um, it's possible that writing could be um, more closely associated with helping with that. And of course, fountain pens are a way that you can really enjoy the writing experience a lot not and receive less friction in your writing, especially if you're writing for long times with stream of consciousness type of thing. I think a fountain pen is one of the best ways to do that. So I could see that being something that would um, bring it maybe a little bit more into the consciousness of society. Um, I could see, you know, just handwriting and journaling in general, not necessarily with the pens as standalone tools, um, but kind of uh, riding the wave of some of those things. Bullet journaling really caught on for the last several years in the pen community. I think bullet journaling is now um, getting caught more into outside of the pen community. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, I think pen stores in general are going to continue to see a change. They have been seeing a change in the last 10, 15 years. Brick and mortar stores, like all brick and mortar stores, are being challenged, um, especially ones that are really niche interests like, you know, pens. Um, I think that um, physical brick and mortar stores are going to become more destination locations. They're going to be less just kind of ever present. I think a lot of your like major office supply stores and stuff like that are going to be challenged greatly. Um, and so you're not going to see this stuff like widely available. It's going to be very much specialty stores. Um, and then online, of course, is going to continue to remain um, a huge part, probably dominate um, worldwide over time. Um, you know, even in more established countries that have brick and mortar presences, the online is just going to, it's going to be undeniable um, uh, how influential that will be in the pen community. Um, it's hard to say like where the community as a whole is going to be, you know, thinking about like where we were 10 years ago, where are we going to be 10 years from now? You know, Instagram wasn't even invented 10 years ago. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be interesting to think like what could possibly be around 10 years from now that hasn't even been created yet. And especially thinking about like the speed at which new platforms are being adopted and attaining kind of their, you know, I know one benchmark is like the 100 million user per month um, thing. Uh, I think that that's, uh, you're seeing faster and faster uh, adoption of new platforms. Like, you know, Facebook took so much time, Instagram took so much time, you know, Snapchat, and then like, I think Twitch took like, you know, nine months or something to, to reach the 100 million user mark. So it's like each new platform that's reaching that mark is happening faster and faster. So um, I think that probably there's gonna be something dominant in the community that maybe hasn't even been invented yet um, that will be 10 years from now. I'm curious to see what form that will take. Um, but especially thinking about where like VR, AR, a lot of things are going to be heading in the next 10 years. That's, you're not gonna be like wearing contact lenses with you know, three dimensional like pens that you'll like hold in your hand virtually and be writing virtually. Maybe, I don't know. 10 years from now, probably not. 30 years from now? Who knows? Um, but it'll be interesting to see just like where our community is congregating uh, online. But I think that'll be a, that'll be a pretty big deal. Um, the whole online um, connectedness presence will be pretty big. Um, let's see here. I think there will be some smaller manufacturers that are going to crop up. You know, some others that are even going to grow and expand who are maybe small now. They're going to grow even bigger. You know, think about a brand like Noodlers or Twisby, you know, where they're a relatively small um, company compared to some of the, the older and more dominant ones. 
um, but they are making more of a name for themselves. I think you're going to see more of that happening over the next 10 years in the pen world, um, especially as the community gets more established and social media and stuff gives exposure to smaller manufacturers. Um, I think you're going to see the typical um, you know, distribution relationship within the pen world to be challenged pretty greatly. Um, thinking about even just beyond the pen world, you're seeing companies like Nike, you know, they used to have all of their new release shoes happen at like Foot Locker or whatever. Um, and now you're just not seeing that as much. You see kind of their regularly offered stuff there, but when they have major new launches, they're selling direct, you know, and they're going direct, they're cutting out a lot of the distribution chain. Now, granted, that's a much larger industry. Whether you're gonna see that happen in the fountain pen world necessarily, probably not because you don't have manufacturers that are nearly that big and have that infrastructure in place. But certainly you're starting to see some brands, some manufacturers who have a much flatter um, you know, distribution model. You don't have you know, a manufacturer with you know, a global distributor and local distributors, retailers, whatever. You're gonna see much less middlemen, uh, for lack of better terms, and I would consider myself to be one of those middle people. Um, you know, as a retailer. So you're gonna see manufacturers selling direct. You know, think about like Twisby as an example. Like Twisby sells direct um, to you and they will interact with you directly. They also sell through a few select retailers, but that's it, that's a whole distribution chain right there. So they don't have, you know, distributors all over the place. Um, you know, and so they're able to stay much more affordable, a little flatter structure. Um, and things like that. So I think you're going to see more, sort of like you have like micro brews and craft brews and stuff like that um, in the the brewery world. You're going to end up with like behemoths who, you know, are completely dominating the market. And then you're going to end up with a a ton of smaller manufacturers that aren't set up for huge widespread distribution, but that are able to make like these craft products and they can make things in small batch kind of things. You're going to see that uh, you're already are seeing that in the pen world. You're seeing a lot of smaller manufacturers that are selling direct or doing shows or just through their website or have one or two select um, retailers that they work closely with. And then that's kind of as much as they really want to grow. Um, you know, so I, that's that to me is incredibly interesting to see where that will go. Um, for us, we definitely plan to stay around. Um, we're going to continue putting out great content and service. What that looks like 10 years from now, who knows? We haven't really changed drastically that much in the last 10 years. Um, you know, uh, we've, we've kind of doubled down on certain things and there have been platforms that have come up and, you know, heavy on the customer service side of things, but we haven't changed that too much. I think there's like core principles of how we're going to operate as Goulet Pens, um, exactly how and what form that's going to take is kind of yet to be seen. But I definitely think, um, you know, going more in the one-on-one -on -one kind of curated experience is probably going to have to happen. Um, as it is right now in the fountain pen world, when you as a newbie coming into the world, you're exposed to these pens through whatever means. You might see some pictures on Instagram or you're exposed to a video through a recommendation from YouTube um, and you kind of stumble into it and you're like, well, that seems kind of interesting. You might hear about us or our site and you kind of stumble in and you're like, what are all these brands? What is going on here? I think what you're going to see is you're going to see more sophistication in general around a lot of niche interests, but especially with you know fountain pens. Um, I think you're going to see more of a curated, individualized experience welcoming you into whatever that hobby is, right? So like we're thinking about that right right now at Goulet Pens. We have a ton of content. We have Fountain Pen 101, which is helpful. We have some online tools, which are really helpful. Pen Plaza, Swap Shop, Nib Nook, these types of things. Um, but we don't have like one place that when you come to our site is like, here you go. Welcome to the site. Here's the rundown. Here's the world that you stepped into. Let's give you the rundown. Let's walk you through it. Here's a series of newsletters to help you out and introduce you to all this. You know, we don't, we're working on developing that better, but largely it's people that they call it falling down the rabbit hole. You kind of stumble into this world, you get interested, you learn about smatterings of things all over the place, and then you kind of fall into the community, you love the community, and then you start to just explore, you get a bunch of pens, you try them out, and you figure out kind of as you go. I could see much more sophistication around, you know, different people, your interests that you have, um, and and where you're finding out about different products and having much more of a curated kind of welcoming experience. I could see that getting much more sophisticated around all areas of retail in the next 10 years, not just pens. Um, and then I just see the community maturing more, you know, connecting more, having even stronger 
uh, connectedness, maybe probably more of an emphasis on physical gatherings. Um, I think that you know physical pen shows, like in-person pen shows, went through a bit of a dip, and then now they're kind of coming a little bit more in vogue, um, especially as people are really connected online, and then they can actually go to a place where there are pens and being able to meet up. Um, it, the next 10 years is going to be interesting to see how that happens. I definitely see, you know, some shows where it's like the old guard who've been doing the shows for 10, 15, 20 plus years that are kind of doing it the way they've always done it. Um, some of that may get disrupted in the next 10 years, um, whether it's, you know, they're just aging out and they're not able to kind of keep doing it and they kind of pass the torch or whether they're just the show kind of collapses and shuts down and then the new one has to kind of rise up and take it over. Um, I definitely think there's a huge opportunity, huge opportunity at pen shows to integrate more social content. There's definitely like, you know, call it what you will, but like pen celebrities who are doing reviews and blogs and all that kind of stuff that are organically, they're just kind of showing up at the pen shows. They're bringing a lot of attention and stuff like that. But I could definitely see more of a partnership between pen shows and the people that are deep, deep, deep into the pen world and have some influence there to host some things and make it a more cohesive experience. Um, right now, it's pretty much just people show up and things kind of happen, you know, on the fly. Um, you know, I could see I could see much more um, of a curated experience happening physically in person. Maybe there's more meetups that start to happen locally. You know, just as people connect more, and you know, even just like our Goulet Nation group, you know, people connecting more and, and having meetups that are cropping up locally. You know, all across the country, um, I could see that being an interesting thing. But I'm very optimistic. You know, I don't think that fountain pens are going to become irrelevant in the next 10 years. At least we are fighting hard around here to keep that from happening. Um, um, but 10 years is a long time, it's hard to say. So we're trying to keep uh, current, trying to keep top of mind for a lot of folks and uh, introduce more people to this wild, wonderful world. So anyway, those are just some bleh, kind of top of mind thoughts that I had uh, within the last 24 hours as I jotted down these notes for what's gonna happen in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm.